How many people in here would say that they've either been hurt by religion or hurt by a religious person? If you just raise your hand. Wow, there's a lot of hands in the building. Okay, that's why we preach grace. Because religion has nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus was always bucking his head against religion. In fact, many of his followers and the people that, you know, tried to get to know him through religion ended up wanting to hurt him or cast him out. So you're in a comfortable place, and that's why we preach grace to people. Um, I'm a grace preacher. I only preach grace because I grew up in the church since I was a little kid. And it's the only thing that I've ever seen work, ever, in the hearts of men and women. And it's the only fruit that I've ever seen produced beautifully is the fruit of grace. And uh, in case some of you don't know what grace is, there's a lot of different definitions for it. But grace is really Jesus. You know, the book of John says that the law came through Moses. Anybody doesn't know what the law is? That's religion. Law is always examining you, trying to see what you did right, what you did wrong. Are you a screw up? Are you a good person? Santa Claus has the naughty and nice list. Who's naughty doesn't get a gift, and if you're nice, you get something. Well, that's not how it works in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus came to remove the law, to fulfill it, and crucify that sucker on the cross so you would never examine yourself again. You would always examine the lamb. Problem is within the church, the greatest confusion is the mixture of covenants. We still go back to a place of law, and that's simply because you haven't understood the truth of who Jesus Christ is in you, through you and what he has given you by the free gift of grace. Last night I was at a a screening of the new Mary Poppins movie over at the Walt Disney lot. It was a really cool night. And what was interesting about uh, the movie, and some of you may have seen it already, um, this old balloon lady, very elderly woman, at the end of the movie, I won't give away who she is, but she goes to Mary Poppins and all the kids and the adults are flying in the air on these balloons, you know, very kind of miraculous, supernatural thing. And the older lady, she looks at Mary Poppins and she says, the adults are all going to forget by tomorrow, aren't they? And Mary Poppins said, yeah, they always do. They always forget. And the elderly lady also said to uh, the dad who forgotten what it was like to be a kid, she said, you've forgotten, haven't you? And he said, forgotten one. He said, what it's like to be a child. And so tonight I'm going to teach you how to just real quickly receive grace as a child And you might forget it by tomorrow. You may go back to the old way of things, but that's okay. For this five minutes, you're going to get to receive the grace of God. So the book of John chapter 5, Jesus is talking to these lofty adults and all their religious leaders at the time. And he's having problems with them because they're not understanding who he is. And so he says, you study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about who I am, Jesus, the Son of God. Yet, you refuse to come to me to have life. You refuse. You're so caught up in everything that you think you know or you're so smart and intelligent, but you haven't had the revelation of who I am and who I was sent as to save you from everything and to give you the grace. I do not accept glory from human beings, Jesus said, but I know you. Oh, you got to love Jesus, you know. He's like, hey, I don't need the praise of man. Praise of man's fleeting. They'll praise me one second, you know. Worship me, Hosanna, the most high. I'll be on a donkey. They'll be worshiping me. And then three days later, they'll say, crucify me. So he knows the praise of man is fleeting. But I know you, he said. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my father's name and yet you do not accept me but if someone else comes in his own name well you accept him but i come from the most high and you don't even know who i am you're you're outcasting me how can you believe since you accept glory from one another but do not seek the glory that comes from the one and only god how can you understand what glory is if you're just always looking for the praise of man. Look what I did for God yesterday. Look how many people I saved. Look how much I gave to the church. And those are all wonderful, beautiful things that are amazing operations of the Holy Spirit working in you. I'm not saying that's not what you shouldn't do, but I'm saying there are within, you know, the works and everything, this bragging, right? And Jesus is saying, don't worry. The glory doesn't come from you. It comes from me. And then he goes on to say, "Um, but, Do not think I will accuse you 
before the Father. So Jesus lays it out there. I'm not the one accusing you. The enemy is described as the accuser of the brethren. Do you know why he goes after the brethren? Because Christian people are the easiest people to accuse. Because they have so much consciousness of law on them. And so I'm going to wrap with this. I just got my alarm, but I just want to close with this. Jesus says the most beautiful thing, and he takes away what was written in the scriptures and, you know, some of the Proverbs and the Chronicles where people would use these scriptures as a way of condemning people. And Jesus is saying, I'm not, I'm not the one accusing you. He says, but your accuser is Moses who gave the children of Israel the law on whom your hopes are set. If you believe Moses, you would believe me for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe? what I say. So it's all about what Jesus has said. It's all about who he is. It's all about the fulfillment of that old covenant. And when Jesus died, he cut covenant with God the Father. And because of the blood of Jesus, we get to live in that grace and truth that came through the one man, Jesus the Christ. Didn't come through your good performance. Didn't come because you get it all right. It didn't come because you show up to church every Sunday. It came because God the Father loved you so much that he knew he had to give you grace so that you could receive it and stop accusing you to yourself, stop accusing others. And just start receiving the grace so that you could be that temple of love to people. And you can go to someone having a hard time and saying, you know what? It's okay. Have this next fall on me. I know where you've been. I'm going to be here to catch you. So that's my five minutes of grace. Thanks.